Good morning. Good morning. We can take some wind again. Yeah. Take some wind. <laughs> you know, there's, Elder Chris asked me about the scripture, and no, there was, there, there's no, there was no mistake about having that scripture there. And if you recognize your bulletin, there's no mistake, but three weeks in, three weeks in a row and of the same bulletin and the same scripture. Amen. Our church, if you ever open up the bulletin and you really look at it, it says that therefore if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. There's a reason why we why we this church was founded on that promise right there. That was one one of the promises that we were given. So as this year has turned new, and you know, we, we talked last last week about New Year's resolutions. I myself don't do New Year's resolutions. I think that if you can resolve to do something new at any point in your life, at any hour in your life, Amen. change. There's nothing wrong with change. But the scripture itself, as, as Elder Chris said, we need to maybe think about it and pray over it a little more. Recognizing where your strength truly comes from. Amen. So many times we try to do things on our own power, not realizing that you're going to fail. You're going to fail. You need God. Amen. You need God's power to do what it is that you want to do. Especially those big tasks. He cares about the small ones, but those, those big tasks that you're up against, think about that for a moment. Man, how many times in my life have I gone up against the, the, you know, the giants, you know? The Goliaths in your life, and you're thinking, oh, I, I can do this on my own. Mm -hmm. And yet, it doesn't quite work out that way, does it? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you once again for this opportunity just to speak your words into your children, Lord. Let these words be of you and not of me, Lord. Lord, I ask that just the planning and the recess to go into each and every one of our lives, Lord, that you are included. Let us include you, Jesus. Yes. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. You know, last week we had, we were speaking about spiritual planning. You know, again, we were talking about planning. We do so many, so many times we plan everything in our lives, but sometimes we forget our spiritual planning. Sometimes we forget how is it that we connect with God and God connects with us in everything that we do. And so when it comes, when we think about planning, let's make sure we're putting God in that plan. Amen. Let's make sure we're putting God in that plan. You see, last week we talked about how to go about doing it, and I gave you some, kind of some foundations to start. The first one was to, one, acceptance. And along with acceptance comes surrender. Comes surrender. And then, we, of course, we need to pray in and out of season. I don't care what's going on in your life. If times are bad, pray. If times are great, pray anyway. Amen. Continue on. And fellowship. Y'all hear me say this all the time. This walk was not meant to walk alone. Amen. You're not meant to walk alone. For our brothers and sisters there, we come to your aid. We surround you. Surround you with love. What's that saying? They say, kill them with kindness. Boy, I tell you, we uplift them in love. Amen. <laughs> the other one is to fast. I've been studying a lot on fasting. Studying a lot on fasting. You know, Christ fasted several times. It wasn't just Amen. once, several times. Do good works. People say, oh, you're not going to get into heaven without doing good works. But let me tell you, that's, that statement is true. But when you're doing good works, it's showing your heart. God knows your heart. Amen. But then above all, there's faith. Amen. Above all, there's faith. Amen. Gotta have the faith. So those are those, those foundations to starting your spiritual planning. You see, we, we went into Luke 14, 28 last week. And it talks about for which of you, not yet, for which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. Yeah. You see, that was Christ speaking, and what he was talking about is, do we truly know what it is to follow Christ? 
Amen. When we truly know what it is to follow Christ, when you say, I give myself to Christ, I give myself away, you know, that's, that's that, that theme song. Y'all heard me. I love that song. I give myself away. That's that surrender. Amen. That's that surrender there. You're good. <laughs> that's that surrender. So when we're when we're when we're planning, give it to God. Now, in that planning, and much like we, we talked about, even when this first time of the year comes around, everybody wants to work out and get into the gym and say they're gonna renew their body and refresh, and then all of a sudden they don't continue on. They stop for some reason. See, today's message is a spiritual reset. A spiritual reset. You see, in the, in the, in the dictionary it says reset is to set, but the, but the other is to adjust. Sometimes we've got to make adjustments in our plans. Amen. We've got to make adjustments in our plans. Find a different way, a new or a different way, when you are going through your plan. And it's okay. It's okay. I can't tell you how many times that I've gotten on that, on, that, on that spiritual wagon and I'm going along, and then all of a sudden something comes up against me and I start to kind of drift away because I think, well, maybe I need to focus my attention more over here instead of right here where the Lord had me to begin with. Sometimes things come against you. But do you know sometimes those things that come against you? It says no weapon formed. It didn't say it's not going to come against you. It says no weapon formed. Oh, prosperous. Should not prosperous. <coughs> exactly. But when that happens, what do we need to do? Let's reset. Let's adjust. Let's start to think about, well, maybe this is not quite the way I need to go, but I'm still going in that right direction. I'm still getting there towards our Father. Colossians 3.10 says, And have put on the new man who is renewed in knowledge, according to the image of him, of him who created him. You see, it says a new man who is renewed. English Standard Version says being renewed. So you're continuously being renewed. Amen. Continuously being Amen. renewed. Amen. So you got to remember that you are a new creation, and sometimes it can be difficult for the flesh to accept that. Mm -hmm. You know, the flesh pushes back a lot. Mm -hmm. The flesh truly pushes yes, back yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. you got to understand, you've been walking around in this flesh, and you can insert whatever age you are, but you've been walking around in this flesh for some time now. Yeah. You've gotten accustomed to it. Yeah. But then there's things that we have to realize that there's a spirit inside of us that yeah. should overcome yeah. that flesh. Yeah. Amen. There's a spirit inside of us that should overcome that flesh. And the flesh doesn't like to kind of be bothered with that. It likes to stay right where it is. It doesn't want to, you know, adjust. But do you know that there is power already inside you to make Amen. that adjustment to overcome Amen. the flesh? <coughs> See, you have to change your inner perception of you and acknowledge that you were truly, truly created in his image. When you change that inner perception of you and acknowledge who has truly created you, you are walking in him. we got to start walking in victory, y'all. Amen. We have got to start walking in victory. Amen. Amen. You know, we were speaking over at, at um, Bible study this week, and we were talking about, well, this, this connection and just the authority. And why is it that we don't have the authority? And there's, you know, we, there was a, a good discussion on that. You gotta recognize that you have authority. You were given authority over many things. Amen. We already know the devil does not have the power that you believe that he has. It's what Amen. you give him. Amen. Amen. We know this already. So that if we know this, why is it that the flesh keeps tugging back at us? Why is it that the flesh keeps tugging back at us? So I'm gonna tell you guys something. I started a, a treatment, and uh, it was on uh, teeth, adjusting teeth. Those of you guys that don't know about adjustment, never have braces or anything like that, what they first told me was that you need to wear these little aligners because your teeth are accustomed to where they were in that same position. And if you don't do it, they're going to adjust back to where they were. Mm -hmm. 
See, originally I thought, well, once I'm done with it, I don't have to worry about it anymore. But do you know when you get done with something, you're not done? You got to stay on top of it. You've got to stay on top of it. Or what happens? That same old lagging, dragging flesh can just drag you right back to where you were. Amen. Right back to where you were. That was interesting. That was really interesting to me. And I thought, wow. All right, well, this is something that I'm going to have to probably wear for the rest of my life. And the reality is, we should be wearing the all the, the, the cloak, the cloak, just the helmet, just the sock, for the rest of our lives. We need to just wrap ourselves up in Christ. Every time we get up, every time we take a breath. Isn't that something? We think that, oh, it's over. I gave my life to Christ. No, that's just a start. That's just a start. I gave my life to Christ. Everything's going to be all right. Let me tell you, no. No. I had my uncle tell me when, when I was first ordained, he said, you know what? The devil's going to come at you a lot harder. Amen. And I thought, well, wow, that's, that's pretty prolific. And I, and I listened to my uncle. My dad's here right now. I listened to the guidance that they give me. And, it's, and one of the things he said was, the devil's going to come against your marriage. And I said, you can't have fun. You've been fine for years. Oh, yeah. And like, hey, what's going to come against us? How could that happen? Yeah. But you know what? If I let the flesh, especially... Y'all heard only parts of the stories, but especially the old me. If I let the old flesh in me, oh yeah, our marriage will be doomed. Our marriage will be doomed. You gotta understand, this is a new creation that's standing in front of you. And every day, every day I pray that I just continue on that's it. in this journey. That's it. It's a tough one. Amen. It's a tough one. But you know what? I thank God that I got folks like y'all around, surrounding me. Amen. The prayers that come through, even the calls that come through and say, hey, how you doing? I got a call this week. Someone <laughs> didn't need anything. They just wanted to say, how you doing? And I oh, thought, good. wow, praise God. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you for that. That's awesome. But that's what we do. That's what we do. This is what this church body, this family does. We surround each other. Amen. You know, if he's not pleased with what you're doing, I mean, Christ, if Christ or God is not pleased with what you're doing, you shouldn't be either. Amen. You shouldn't be either. Amen. We got to stop just getting just so stuck in there. Got to have those accountability partners. This is this is this church body. These accountability partners. You know, I had a I had a brother come to me and says that um, he said that that you know I I, I need to be around people. I need to surround myself with good people. And I said, that's great. I know a lot of great folks you can surround yourself with. Sometimes we got to put aside some of those old friends and even family Amen. sometimes that we've been running with. We've got to put them aside. Amen. What did I say before? I pray that they either are going to get, I'm either going to push, pull, or leave them behind. Mm. I pray that they leapfrog me. Amen. I pray that they leapfrog me. But I tell you, sometimes I gotta leave them behind. And I've left some folks behind. I have. Because they just were no earthly good, and they certainly weren't any heavenly good to me. Gotta push them aside. If they're not willing to get on board with you and your new freedom, let them go. Amen. Let them go. Yeah. You know, Philippians 4 6 says, Be anxious for nothing. Just another way that we can reset and adjust is one, we need to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. I told you, once you give your life to Christ, don't expect this transformation to happen overnight. Amen. Don't expect to wake up and go, well, I'm walking in Christ now and uh, no weapon form. I, I'm not, it's going to be fine. You still got to work. You got to put in some work. Take some baby steps. You know, I had a brother call me the other day, and he said, um, he said, I'm really working to change some things. He said, I, I'm, the first thing I'm doing, I'm, I'm trying, and I'm praying so hard that I stop cursing. I stop <laughs> cursing. Yeah. I said, baby steps, brother. That's fine. 
Now, to some folks, they say, oh, that's nothing. But you know what? We're all different. Amen. To that brother, it's probably huge. So don't discount people when they say, well, I'm going to stop cursing, or I'm going to stop eating this, or drinking that, or you know, gambling, whatever it is, whatever vice you got. Don't discount that. Mm -hmm. It's big in their life. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's big in their life. Demanding what you should be doing and demanding what you should be in your own time. Mm. How are you going to demand what you should be and tell God where you should be and what time you should be? Mm. How do you do that? We try to do it all the time. Amen. There we go. That means we're walking without him. We're trying to get ahead of him. And all we're doing is stumbling. We're getting in our own way. We're getting in our own way. It takes some time to realize who is truly in control. It does take some time. That's where that submission comes from. Amen. Gotta learn how to submit. Amen. You know, let me tell you, let me go back to Colossians. I gave you the first part of that, but I always say sometimes you gotta read to the left and the right of the comma. We're gonna go back to the left of the comma. It's not up on the uh, on the bulletin there, but in um, Excuse me, I'm sorry, in Philippians. Uh, Philippians 4. Give me one second, I apologize, y'all. Okay, sorry, it was Colossians 8, uh, 3 8. See, what was going on there is that when you're remembering that you're a new man, one of the things that was being taught to us there is saying that you put off all these things, all these things that are of the flesh, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication. Didn't I just speak about that, brother, saying that, you know, I want to stop cursing? Filthy communication out of your mouth. You know, the funny thing about it is people say that, you know, we ought to close our mouths more because God gave us two ears so we can hear more and, you know, speak less. That's one way. It's one way to think of it. But let me share, share with you this. It's my belief. It's nothing that Christ said, not in the Bible, but my belief. We have another one. We've got our heart. That's how we get in touch with that spirit. Amen. We've got our heart. So if you've got ears and a heart. That's three times more than what should be coming out of your mouth. So if we've got that spiritual connection that we can hear, put our spiritual ears on, we've got these old fleshly ears, we hear the right thing, let the spirit decipher it and make it correct for you. You're on the right path then. Amen. People say, you know what? Sometimes you ought to just shut your mouth. Come on. Sometimes you ought to just shut your mouth. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Sometimes that's a tough pill for us to swallow. Mm -hmm. It truly is. Especially it depends if someone says it and it's not out of love. Shut up. Doesn't sound too right. Doesn't sound good at all. Hey, Billy, can you give me one moment? Just listen to this. Oh, okay, I'm ready to hear. But let me tell you, sometimes you got to hear in both ways. You got to understand and break it down in both ways. As I begin to close here, Acts 3.19 give you another clue about how to reset. Acts 3.19 says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing, hear me, times of refreshing, renewal, reset, that's what we're talking about here, may come from the presence of the Lord. If do you know that there is power in the tongue? Amen. Amen. Do you realize that when you speak things, you are claiming them? Amen, brother. When you speak things, you are claiming them. Amen. So when this happens, you got to repent. Meaning that you've got to acknowledge what you've done that is not correct. Claim it anyway. Claim what you have done. Change what you have done. Yes. Speak of your shortcomings, the ones that you offended. Speak to them. And speak to Christ about it. 
Come on. Amen. Don't keep trying to hide your misdeeds. Amen. Oh, man. Yes. Hallelujah. Grandmother used to say all the time was done in the dark, but what? Come to the light. Come to the light. Oh, I miss that lady. Amen. It makes it real for you. It truly makes it real when you speak these things. And real can be changed in the flesh with the help of the Spirit. Amen. It truly can be changed. It doesn't matter how many times you fall off the wagon. Because I guarantee you this. Kat and I were talking earlier this week. 70 times 7. That's what time, how many times we should forgive each other. But how many times does our Father forgive us? How many times does our Father forgive us? Till that last breath is out of us. Amen. He's still working on us. Amen. He's still calling us. Amen. He still has his arms wide open. Say, yeah. Come to me. Amen. Come to me. Yeah. Sometimes we need that worship experience in our lives. Amen. Where we just need to be one on one with God. Yes. Yeah. You. you know, this, this past uh, Bible study comment was made of, Pastor, you said this in your message. I said, I didn't say that. We'll run the tape back. And what it taught me was that I'm glad that I'm not the only one standing up here. To you, it may appear that I'm the only one, and maybe not. Come on, with. But there it is, the Holy Spirit that's right here speaking Amen. into me. Amen. That I speak out to you. Sometimes I don't even recognize what I say. Hallelujah. But I thank God that he's right Hallelujah. there speaking Hallelujah. to me. And I'm going to tell you this. This is not a sermon about, well, you know what, you failed. This is a sermon about renewal. You've not failed. Amen. Amen. It's a sermon that you should be able to just... Encourage one another. Yeah, Let yeah. me tell you, I've heard many of your stories. Some of you are starting the journey. Some of you are well into it. But what I know is I've seen breakthroughs. I see people that are right on the verge of breakthroughs yeah. that shouldn't yeah. be giving up right now. It is tough. Hallelujah. I know it's tough. I've been there in certain circumstances. Well, uh, but when you change those circumstances, on, when you acknowledge, say, repent, yeah. understand what's going on, Hallelujah. and recognize that you are a new creation. Amen. This is a subliminal thing that I've been Preacher. putting out to yeah. let you know every week you are a new creation. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I think we'll probably go to this sometime periodically throughout the year to remind you of who you are. To remind you of who you are. Well. We are, we come from the most holy of holies. Amen. The king of kings. Amen. We gotta start acting like it. Hallelujah. We gotta stop letting the devil think that he is in control. Yeah. Um, you know, there's times when I think about it, I just put my, my foot, I pick pictures of my foot just right on the devil's neck. Amen. Saying, no, you have no power over me. Hallelujah. Don't get me wrong, he does have power. But he has no power over you. He has no power over you. You see that, that image of Jason Witten up there that we had? He had to adjust. See, what happened to him, you see his helmet's not there. But he's still going for the goal line. He sees the goal. We've got to keep the goal in mind. Amen. We have got to see it. And let nothing stop. That look of determination right there is how we should always be. Walking in the spirit at all times. Keeping that look of determination. Well, we are going to that end. Uh, and what a beautiful, glorious end it will be. My love. What a beautiful, glorious end it will be. Hallelujah. I don't have anything else for you this morning. That's it. I pray that you remember that you can always renew yourselves. Amen. Always keep the spirit with you. Let it, that light, that's the knowledge and the light right there. That's what needs to come out of you. It's already in you. Right. It's already in you. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you once again that your words, Lord, just speak to the ones that need to, to hear them, Lord, and it lands and stays within their hearts, Lord. Right. Overflows their hearts and into their minds, Lord. Overflows their mind and into their actions, Lord. Bless your name. Let them show others, Lord. How powerful you are. Yes. yes. You are our Father, Lord. Oh, Father. I speak this in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.